everyone. It gives me great pleasure to uh, introduce uh, Dr. Shashato Roy. Uh, Dr. Roy and I were uh, PhD students together at UC Irvine, uh, where he was advised by uh, Dr. Philip Forsha, who uh, is one of the leading PIs and uh, you know creators and people who continue to develop uh, TurboMole, which is uh, ab initio software for carrying out a wide variety of uh, quantum chemical uh, calculations. And so Dr. Roy has also developed stuff for, for TurboMole. So he's a super duper expert in this area. So we're very lucky to have him. Uh, so let's see, after earning his uh, PhD from UC Irvine, uh, Dr. Roy went on to do a postdoc position uh, in uh, Dr. Sharon Hams Schiffer at uh, Yale University. Uh, and now he's recently begun a, a new postdoctor researcher position uh, in the research group of Dr. Uh, Nipa Maitra at uh, Rutgers University, where he's going to be doing uh, some time dependent uh, density functional theory uh, to model uh, electron nuclear dynamics. So we are very, very lucky to have uh, Dr. Roy uh, working with us on this on this project. And, and I really appreciate you making time to, to speak with us today. So, uh, all right. That being said, take it away, Dr. Roy. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, I'll basically, uh, instead of having slides, what, I'll, what I've prepared is hands on how to work with turbo directly. So uh, can uh, you share your screen where you have a turbo mole shell? Yeah, so I'll, I'll just uh, sign into, yeah, you got it. Let me, uh, let me just because straighten up my desktop a little bit. I think it's <laughs> best if I tell stuff for you to do and you like do it. I have the entire thing packaged already. So yeah, I'll send you the idea. final output that I have on my part that I know will run. Cool. That's great. All right. Let me, um, let's see. So just, just the terminals all you need right now? Yeah. Okay. So let me share my screen. Share. Share and uh, I got the manual open there. I was trying to look at it a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> the man manual is a bit of a uh, work in progress. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Um, right. But uh, and uh, and just so that the students know, uh, we we are recording this, so uh, you know we can come back and and figure stuff out later if we forget right. how uh, something was done. Let me make my terminal nice and big so everybody can see it easily. I think that's a pretty good size, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I am on the Spartan server and uh, cool. All right, what do you, what should we do? <laughs> so so uh, how, uh, how you've installed TurboMold into this server, right? Yes. So yeah, I was just uh, testing it this morning. Right, so uh, just for my uh, sake, can you type define? So, so, so what is it? Define? define. Yeah. Okay, it works. Great. Cool. So type QQ. Yeah. QQ oh, is after... it, yeah. So QQ is its exit code. Anyway. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> I think I just uh, control C right. it. Yeah, yeah. So uh so the way uh turbo so, uh, oh, designing. Oh. Right. Uh so it has created this control file. So basically. The, exactly the way a turbo mole is def, uh, uh, is designed is each job is its own directory okay so you create a directory uh right yeah let me let me uh, so so uh the ones i just created here i should probably get rid of these right, right? Temp should, input. yeah temp and control okay remove temp input remove control Right, and I think I'm good now. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna uh, just to tell the students what I'm doing. So I'm gonna. So I just made this directory, Dr. Roy demo, and I'm just I'm gonna change directories into that, so that anything we create gets created in a, in, in its own directory. Okay. Now, uh, as a uh, principle, like as a principle, the only input that TurboMole requires from the user is at any given point is the position and to do MD, the velocities. Okay. So uh, we'll need a position file, like a chord. So the typical name for it is given chord, C-O-O-R-D. Okay. So you create a file, let's say make HCL, let's say, for example, for a demo, because okay. we'll op open a file called chord. Oh, okay. So just do, or, VI 
Mm-hmm. Cord. Dot anything or just cord? Yes, just it. Just cord. Okay. Now dollar cord. That is its keyword. Enter. Then zero zero zero. And with spaces, sorry. Like these are the X Y Z coordinates. Oh, cool. Okay, got it. Uh, H. Let's say. Uh, a small H. It, it takes small letters. Oh, okay, got it. And zero zero three point five CL. Nice. Five. Both little or? Yeah, both little. Yeah. Okay. Enter dollar end. Cool. Save that and yes. get out. Okay. Yes. And now here is the one of the I think better implementations of Koga TurboMall is the program define. So basically, before you run a program in TurboMall, it needs its input file. But the input file itself is pretty complex. So to help with that, there is another program called define. So we are going to define our input. So type define. Enter. Yes. It's an interactive code. Oh, cool. Right, right. Right. Press enter. Enter. I mean, it doesn't really need to Oh, just type. keep going? Or? No, 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 no. Now, now here is the oh. thing. Now, this is the where you input the coordinates. So literally type A space chord. Enter. This has added your uh, uh, coordinates to your input file. That cool. HCL file we just made. Now we, okay. to exit this part of the menu, you type star. Type star, you said? Star. Enter. Right. Okay. Do you want to use internal coordinates? The answer is no. For MD, we definitely don't want internal coordinates. Okay. Now, since we are doing ab initio. And, and just, just to clar clarify for the students, now internal coordinates is like everything's relative to each other, like the distances. Right. So okay. you basically define it through distances and angles of each other. Right, right. So d d does uh, Hikun and Carly, you follow that? Like uh, instead of having like an absolute position like X, Y, and Z, he's saying you could use an internal coordinate system where, you know, instead it's like the distance from CL to the H or, or you know, whatever set of atoms you have. You both good with that? Cool. Yeah, Carly's wait. good with it. He so oh, go ahead. Does it? Yeah, can you just clarify that? And I'm kind of confused about it. Okay. So, uh, what's? Can you explain the distance sure. part again? Yeah, the absolute distance. <clears throat> the so, uh, technically, so to define HCL, we inputted six numbers. It was zero x, zero y, zero z for H, zero x, zero y, and three point five for CL. Yeah. But Chemically, all you re really know to need to know to define HCL is the distance between H and CL. That's the only information you need. Oh. So that is an internal coordinate. It really doesn't matter how it is oriented mm -hmm. uh, because the real chemical properties only depend on the internal uh, distance. Oh. So that way of defining a molecular structure is called internal coordinates. Oh. Oh. Now, that is very useful in uh, chemistry, uh, especially if you have symmetry of a molecule. But when you are going to do molecular dynamics, you need to give velocities along X, Y, and Z. And it's not easy to give velocities in internal coordinates. Mm -hmm. That's why we choose to not use internal coordinates in our system. Oh, OK. I get it now. Yeah. Right. Thank you so much. Of course. And OK, now we are going to do ab initio calculation. So uh, electronic structure uh, theories or methods always use a basis set to define their electronic orbitals. So we are going to use a particular basis set. Now, every program calls their basis sets with its own nicknames. So here we are going to use a smaller basis set, not, well, not the smallest, but these were developed in Germany uh, by my advisor's advisor. So oh. these are called Karlsruhe uh, basis sets. And these are uh, available in other uh, methods as well, but this is like the other ones which are commonly available in, let's say, Gaussian or Orca are not easily available in Turbo. So there's a little okay. bit of 
description. You know what? I just realized something. I, I just made a mistake. I'm always telling my students not to do it. I'm running this on the login node. Right. Let, me, <laughs> let me let me jump out of here. What is it? QQ to quit? Yeah, yeah, QQ. QQ. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna request a node real quick. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Um okay, let yeah. me do Arwen, uh, we typically did the define in the login node itself because it's like a light program. Oh, is it? Oh, okay. I wasn't sure. I thought, oh, I better. Well, okay. Let me um, uh -huh. let me just do it real quick. Uh, I have a, I have a, um, oh my God, what's it? Slurm info interactive. There it is. Right. I always save this thing here. because <laughs> like, I, I, I have a bunch of these files. So I'm like, yeah. where is the been... link to my advisor? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. Now we're on a note. All right. So let me, um, we're still in the same place. Okay. So I'll go back into, I can't remember okay. how I got in there again. Control? No. Uh, or do I have to start over? No, no, you don't have, like, define will pick it up. Okay. So. Oh, define, right. Okay. So hit define again. Okay. And, and, and by the way, just, just so students know, so do you see how this is like, you know how, like, if you start like a Python session or an R session, it opens up like an interactive thing and you can like, Define things you can do stuff. This is the same kind of thing, but this is Turbo Moles interactive session. You're both good on that. Okay, good. Carla, good. Okay, cool. All right, sorry. All right, where were we? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now again, press enter. Enter. It has already now here. Unlike the previous time, this time it has recognized that you have already uh, inputted the coordinates. So it has it is asking, do you want to change it? No, you don't have to change it. So end. And now you have to set up its basis sets. Uh, so the command is bb space def two no no space two dash capital S capital V capital P. So basically split valence uh, pair. So every, uh, every uh, shell is given two Gaussians. This is its nomenclature. Okay. So the way the, the, uh, you uh, order up uh, basis is like how many Gaussians are needed together to come uh, make one shell. Okay. The more you have, the more precise you can go. It's like the getting to the larger basis set limit. Yeah. But uh, you, this is good enough for the time. You know, just just for, for the students, do you mind yeah. giving like a, a very short description of what a, a basis set is and why we have to yes, worry yes, about absolutely. them? So, so uh, studying the hydrogen atom, we know that uh, electron orbitals stay in uh, shells. Like we have the S shell, then the P shells, then the D shells and the F shells. And the larger the atom is, the more of these are occupied because the more electrons they have. Now, uh, how do we model these orbitals? Uh, while we know that the molecular orbitals will interact and create uh, uh, constructive and destructive uh, uh, interference, like the bonding and the anti-bonding orbitals, uh, we need to start by assigning uh, a basis set to define these orbitals for each atom. Now, it is impossible for us to know a priori what the orbital should be. So we model it through Gaussian functions. We literally uh, define, okay, I'm going to uh, say that my Gaussian for hydrogen atom is going to be 0 0.59 angstroms away from the nuclear center. That's going to be its maximum. And that is where we are going to put most of our electron density. So similarly, you uh, develop it for each atom. And then uh, each person who uh, def uh, designed a particular basis set had a particular way of optimizing it. So uh, without getting too much into details, this was optimized for each atom using Hartree-Fock as a method. So this was done by uh, Ulrichs, like my advisor's advisor. So th this is a particular uh, class of uh, basis sets. Now there are other basis sets as well. There's a common one called STO3G. Those are like Slater type. Instead of using Gaussians, they use exponentials. 
and then uh, you have the famous one like uh, 631G. Uh, those are uh, those are also Gaussians. These are functions that you define on space around a nuclear a nucleus to define its orbitals on the basis of which you do the next step calculation. Yeah. And, and just to tie it into something that they've seen in class. So uh, he, so he can, Carl, remember the, the Taylor series uh, project we did, right? Yeah. So remember for the Taylor series, like maybe there's times when you don't know the exact function or the, the exact function is maybe too hard to get for some reason, right? Mm -hmm. But you can have some points and you can fit a Taylor series to it by, you know, adjusting the, the coefficients on it's similar, you know, it, it's different, right. but it, it's, it's of that sort of flavor that basically mm -hmm. you have these simpler functions and you can add up a whole bunch of them with some coefficients, right? And then that gives you a, a good approximation. And right. so basically just like for the Taylor series, like, you know, the more terms you add, the better it gets. And sometimes the, the even terms, right? The ones that are squared or the odd terms, you know, perform better for one reason or another. Um, so yeah, so basically a lot of very smart people spent a lot of time figuring out what combinations of these functions can we add to do right. a good job of approximating the, the true molecular orbitals or atomic orbitals too. Exactly. Does that make sense guys? Yeah, uh, he that makes come? a lot more sense. Okay, cool. So, right. uh, so yeah, so basically like, as far as like running the software, we have to choose one of them and you know it takes some some expertise to know which ones to use so thank goodness we have dr roy here uh but <laughs> so how, this is okay how, how can we find uh which one we need to use is there like a resource for it or do we yes there, there there is like absolutely very very long and tedious calculations are there there's like entire bunch of literature uh, available people published even till today like i just saw a paper in 2022 Mm -hmm. discussing which are the good basis sets for lanthanides and actinides okay. uh, and uh, like you would think that this is something people would have discovered like long back but no it's not like the people are still optimizing improving like some basis sets are better for some properties like this one i know is better for ground state energy mm -hmm. but let's say you want to calculate the magnetic susceptibility of a very complex you know organic ring molecule this is not the best one so depending on the property that you want to uh, study uh, that is like uh, you have to choose uh, yes th this is the holy grail question of like electronic structure what is the best basis set and functional to use and oh. there is no good answer <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> It's a little like uh, the water, you know, some of the water models, models for molecular dynamics where like they're yeah. great if you're like, you know, have a protein sol solvated in it. But then if you want to look at it like boiling or something, it's horrible right. or, you know, like, oh. yeah, the different okay. models are good for different things. And, and you know, kind of like remember with your, your again, go back to the Taylor series example. This is why I have you do this in class is like remember like some of them, like as long as you stay close to the center point, like it's pretty good. Right. But then you get further out and you're like, oh, it's awful now. Yeah. So, yeah, these. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's it's hard like it's hard to make a model that that's fits up. You know, you have yeah, exactly. You have to choose the thing you want your model to be good for and make it good oh, for that thing. Okay. So, so then you always have to know like, you know, which basis set is good for the oh. thing I care about. Oh, okay. I see. Yeah. Right. So you if you press enter. Yeah, thanks for the explanation. That. But so so the command to call for a base basis set is BB. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, so basically to assign, it's uh, there's also B and there's also the, the basically the list for B and list for BB are different. So this one, like if you look at the actual menu, yeah, you can see there's B and there's BB. So there's a different library. Basically, it chooses from a different library in this case. So okay. come on for here is BB. Sweet. Yes. If you enter, it'll assign it. Okay. okay. So what happened? Okay, and enter. It did not find that list. Then type B space uh, def two SVP. Uh, what was it again? <laughs> I've already forgot it. DEF. Uh, no, it doesn't, hope, it's it doesn't have the up. 
B D E F to two. No, no, to two before the dash. Oh, darn it. Uh, okay, def two dash S B. Wait, wait, this, this is a MacBook. The dash is a different. Is this the same as normal dash? Wait, what? Oh, oh, yeah, I'm on a Mac. Yeah. So, so this is a um, minus sign, like regular minus symbol. Is it the same as dash? Hopefully. Uh, not underscore. There's an. Yeah, I think it's the same as dash. Hopefully, let's let's try. It. I guess we'll find out, right? Yeah, uh, right. So, uh, so def two dash what? Capital S, capital S. B, P. P. All right. Try again. Mm -hmm. Okay, it doesn't uh, find the basis. Okay, uh, press enter. Uh, just uh, try to uh, quit this menu. It, let's see if it can find the, no, no, not the QQ, like star. Oh, star. All right. Okay, it has a, a basic basis set. So for the timing, uh, let's use this. Uh, I'll make sure that. Uh, uh, okay, so here you have to guess your molecular orbitals to begin with. So the the very simple calculation that is done is called an extended Huckel theory. Okay. Like the Huckel theory we use for uh, benzene. Yep. The same thing, but a little uh, with a little more parameters. Okay. So that is called EHT. Okay. Type EHT. Oh, little and, lowercase? Yes. The default parameters, yes. What is the molecular charge? Zero. Because so it has assigned a particular uh, occupation. So it has created molecular orbitals and it has given electrons to them. So as you can see, uh, it prints out only the near the homo and the lumo. So you can see that nine shells are occupied up to nine on the left, if you see six, seven, eight, nine. Wow. So eight, there are 18 electrons. So one from hydrogen and 17 from uh, the chlorine. Uh -huh. So do you accept this occupation for the timing? Yes. Yes, and this is where the uh, we call the main menu. <laughs> uh, this is where you add the more uh, sophisticated uh, information. So first information, do we want to do density functional theory? Yes. So we type DFT. So for the others, like density functional theory is like the cheapest, most uh, effective uh, method for calculating electronic energy. So we'll have to choose a functional. So the functional tells you how to calculate the energy or rather how to guess calculate the energy. The density functional theory will never give you the exact energy, but it can approximate it as best as it can with limitations, of course. So, Again, like the same question, how do you know which functional is good? We don't, to be honest. So uh, for our HCL purposes, we can choose. Uh, so if you type F-U-N-C, that is how you choose a functional. F-U-N-C, oh. enter or space? Oh, space. space. Yes. Then you have to give a name. So for our case, let us choose P-B-E, enter. It's one of the famous ones. Right. So that paper right now has like 80,000 citation or something. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, it's just crazy. And for grid, basically, uh, along with the molecular orbitals, you have to define your density, total density in space. So th for that, the, the code needs to create a grid, a 3D grid. So uh, so there are different sizes of it. So typically I use something called M4. So if you type grid space M4, yes. 
and then you type star and you exit out of this menu. And next uh, step is, uh, this is something that we do to improve computational time, but it doesn't really, uh, it, it's not, uh, like the science doesn't change, it's called a resolution of identity. Uh, basically, uh, the most expensive part of any electronic structure calculation is the two electron integral. So th those are integrals that are done uh, over like four functions and it gets very large very soon because it scales n to the power four. Wow. So to reduce that, we use something called the resolution of identity where it brings down the scaling to n to the power three. So if you type ri, and enter, and enter, it assigns a resolution of identity auxiliary basis for the total calculation. And now you're done. Type Q and you're done. So if you open the, see, exactly. So you'll see that it has a basis file. It has a guess molecular orbital file. It has the code file that you have in, initially given in code. And you have a control file. Now this is your most important input file. So let us look into the control file right now. Oh, yes. And here you can see the various options that it has already uh, uh, found. So, so, so when we did our, when we used like the, the define function, it wrote this, right? Right. Okay. The define generated this file. Okay. And now there are two, a few things you want to edit here. You can edit it through define, but it's easier to just manually do it. So there's something called SCF iter limit. Can you see it? It's uh, right there. Right. You want to increase it to like 300. Okay. So Does it matter like the spacing or? No. So, and then you have like things like convergence thresholds. So you can see like, so if you want a tighter convergence threshold, these are more advanced uh, things like, you know, the more you practice then you know, you run into uh, issues, the more you'll have to pay attention to these. But this sometimes, once you generate a basic input file through define, it is often easier to just edit the control file instead of going through define again. Okay. So this is your uh, input. Okay, let's actually run a calculation therefore. Well, and, and but before we do, any questions about this uh, this um, con control file? Yeah, if you go down, there's a more to the file actually. So it has more options. Wow. So there's a whole bunch of parameters for the calculation that it, it set either to something that we told it to do or some default value, um, but, but we can edit this. Does, do Hikun and Carla, uh, do you have any questions about what this thing is, this control file that we're uh, editing right now? Uh, so far I'm following. Cool. You good, Carla? Yeah, I'm good too. Sweet. All right, so I will. Save quit. Right, there it is. Yep. And let's run an actual calculation. Type R I D F T. R I D F T. Uh, and just just that's it, or enter. Cool. It knows to get the uh, control file and do its thing. Okay. Uh -oh. It did not. Okay, it did not get the R I. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, if you run in, uh, whenever a calculation crashes, uh, you have to clean the control file. So okay. to, uh, the command to do that is a very important command. It's called actual dash R space uh, oh. dash R. Oh, I got That's like a flag. Right. Actual R, just that? Yes. Cool. That's nice that you don't have to like pass files. Like it just knows to look in the direct directory where you are. 
Uh, right. In serious trouble. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so the RI option did not work. Okay, okay let's look at, uh, okay, did not get the auxiliary basis as well. So, okay, this is the, the thing, like slightly different from, uh, the depends on the installation. Uh, you have a library of these basis sets. And the what I suspect is even defined right now, couldn't find the uh, basis set libraries. Mm. So if you type define once, uh, just enter. See, if you go up a little, uh, no, no, not up, like you have to scroll with your mouse. Yes, so this is the um, so it has the libraries there. So uh, it should be able to locate it. Uh, this is where uh, I get like I develop things on my local base. Like I rarely develop on like a, a cluster based thing. So I oh, really? That. Yeah, then I copy it on the cluster and run it on the cluster. But gotcha. Rarely. <laughs> So, but this is directly installed onto the cluster, right? Right. Uh, okay. Um, if you go, can, can you for a second go to that Turbo Mode directory? Yeah, I was just thinking that. So, QQ to get out? Yeah, yeah, QQ to get out. It won't hurt. Uh, dollar sign. This place? Right. So, uh, can you uh, source the config ones? Source the, this one right here? Uh, the, the other one. Uh, the this one? one? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Source config. Yeah, now if you go back to that one and then uh, you go to define, just type define, enter, enter. Type yes. Now type bb space def2 2 dash capital S capital V capital P. Okay, it still is not finding the uh, hmm. type uh, bb uh, space def. SVP dash SVP. Uh, def dash that? Uh, no. Capital V. Capital, yeah. yeah. Nope, still, it's still not still no finding, finding that list. So, okay, this is slightly uh, like I have to debug this. This is uh, slightly beyond me. Okay, but for, for running the MD, it doesn't really hurt. Uh, I can still, uh, like, without the RI, I can give the basic uh, uh, structure of how to run this. So if you okay. type Q, you can exit through just QQ. Okay. Yes. Now type DSCF. DSCF. Oh, enter. Whoa. All right. Okay, so basically the old code uh, called DSCF is the, the one which does not utilize the resolution of identity. So that can okay. always be. Got it. Okay. So, so that's, it's. It's actually more accurate. It's, it's and difficult to do with this, but it's. So. Wait, uh, it's more accurate and less computationally expensive? Uh, no, it, it is more expensive. Like less. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, okay, right, right, okay, okay. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, that feels backward. Okay, got it. <laughs> right. So right now you have uh, uh, this uh, situation. Now, if you type Iger, this is all German uh, people's language. E I G E R. Okay. E I G E R. Oh my bad. E I G. Right. That one. Enter. This prints out the orbitals. So if you keep pressing enter, yeah, yeah. 
Wow. So it will tell you the orbital energies of the occupied and the unoccupied orbital energies. Uh, these are the HOMO and the LUMO orbitals. So, and all the subsequent ones, so. Wow. So, now to do uh, dynamics. So this, this one gives you only energy so far. But mm -hmm. to do dynamics, we also need to get uh, the gradient. So the command for that is grad. Okay. Grad. By the way, just to remind the students that the, the mm -hmm. gradient, right? If you think of a, a, a derivative, right? Remember, we had the harmonic potential, the one like a spring. Remember this from class? And like, you know, if you if you pull a ball to one side and let it go, it'll kind of relax, right? It, it'll, it'll bounce back and forth because of the spring. Right, so the, the, the strength of the force that's pushing that is the negative derivative of that potential energy function. You remember this stuff? This is good, he can, it's good. Carla, you remember this? We talked about it a little bit. Yeah, it just I, came to I, me. <laughs> okay, good, good. So yeah, just, just think of it like if you're on a surface, right? Like if you're on a surface and, and you know, you're at the top of a, a valley and you roll down into the valley, right? The, the forces that are pushing you are the negative derivative that's, that's pushing you. So if you do that in a bunch of dimensions, it's a gradient. Right? You take the negative der derivative in every dimension you have, um, which, you know, in this case, this is a, this is a quantum mechanical thing. Right? It's, it's, not, um, it's not like where you have a static um, potential energy function, right? That just stays constant, like we would do with the protein simulations, right? This one can change. Um, anyway, so sorry, yes. So uh, GRAD? GRAD, yeah. Okay. So on that. Did that uh, make something? Oh, yeah. It made the file called gradient. Now let's open gradient. Okay. You can see that it prints out the position and the gradient on each of the atoms for this molecule. What is interesting, oh. and I think this is something the students will appreciate as well, that it is a molecule with no external force which means that the gradient on one atom must be equal to an opposite the other one. So you, if you look at the two numbers, that is then 0.9978, they're equal and opposite. I mean, up to a certain, of course. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, right here. Yeah, that's really, well, that takes a while before they deviate. Right, right. And this is, wow. uh, this is a consequence of conservation of momentum. This is, I mean, total momentum, because the code doesn't know that it has to be equal and opposite. It just happens to be, it like preserves the signs here. So, That's awesome. So Very cool, very satisfying. Right. <laughs> Any questions about that? Uh, I think I'm good. Are you good? Yeah, I'm remember, so good. good. And remember the, uh, the um, uh, <coughs> Leonard Jones, activity that I had to do, right? With that code that I wrote with the Leonard Jones. And then, yeah, I would show you the total potential, you know, the, the, if you add up the potential energy and the kinetic energy, it comes out to a constant for the whole simulation, right? right? And I didn't put that in there, but it comes out because I got the physics right, right? This is a so similar, similar idea here right. is that, you know, that they didn't, they didn't guarantee this in the code, right? But because they did such a good job writing this code, the force, you know, of, of the, you know, pulling between them is, is, um, it's it's quite balanced, right? It's 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 right. you have to get all the way out to here before you see any difference, and it's a very small one. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Right. Now, time for us to do some MD. Cool. Now, similar to uh, uh, to create the input file for electronic structure calculation, we use define to create the input file for uh, MD. There's a similar code called MD prep. So, yes, enter. Run that? <laughs> oh, neat. <laughs> so most of the input for this is basically, uh, you don't actually need to, you just have to type uh, Q and enter, basically. So default option is works for most cases. Basically, okay. this one is asking, is the, uh, the coordinates from your code file supposed to be the input for your MD? Yes. Okay. Q enter. 
Mm. Again, initial position from the same one, yes. Again? Now, do you want a thermostat, basically, cavity? Oh, me. I rarely, uh, like, I always say no, no to all of these. So, okay, so we'll say no. Q and enter. Q, okay, so Q, all right, terminates. Okay, so no to that. Right, this, this again is the constraints. Right. Up. Yeah, we don't want to constrain right. anything, right? So right. no. Now here is where the it generates ah. the input velocity. So yeah, this is where I use it to randomly assign it a velocity because we want it initialized randomly. Yeah. So type I and enter. Oh, oh, and by the way, um, just while I'm thinking of this question. Hmm. For the initializing velocities, is is can you do this by script or do you have to do it interactively like this? No, you can totally script this. Cool, I, cool. I had a bunch of scripts too. Basically, you you can input an entire file, which basically is q q q q i five hundred three hundred whatever. Okay, got it. Perfect. Okay, and good. It can go in as an input file. The oh, MD that's great. Itself. Cool, and and so we could so we could like we could have it read in a set of velocities that we want Absolutely. it to have. You, you can also uh, initialize it uh, like you can script even the defined part of it. So, okay, neat. And the temperature that you want this to be having, basically the kinetic energy. Yeah, what do you recommend? Uh, three hundred is fine. Three hundred. Yeah, Q. Q. Enter. Now time step, del dt. Uh, this is DT. important. Uh, no, 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 don't type dt. This is, oh. I'm just saying. Oh, you're saying it's the dt, right, right. Uh, so type i again. So typically if I, I, if I have a hydrogen in my system, type i and enter, I, uh, you can press enter. Uh, then I choose the time step to be at max 20 atomic units. 20 atomic units is one fourth of a fem to second. The reason I choose that is usually like the typical hydrogen oscillation, uh, it takes a fem to second. So if I want to capture, you know, it moving from equilibrium to one extrema to other extrema, equilibrium to other extrema, I need to give it at least four time steps to do that. That's my okay. uh, argument. Like, so the especially for hydrogens because they are the lightest, they oscillate very fast. Mm -hmm. So uh, I would not recommend going beyond 20 for as DT okay. for anything that has hydrogen, especially with the acetaldehyde simulations. Yeah. The real simulations, you do not want to uh, go beyond 20. Okay. It it, it could, could that lead to uh, numerical instabilities? Like it? Yes. So basically, okay. sometimes it can overstep in a particular yep. step and suddenly it is in a potent, like, region of potential energy surface where uh, like the DFT no longer works very well. So yep. Ideally, if your DFT worked universally well for all configurations, it probably shouldn't matter. Uh, I mean, beyond like, you know, uh, error in total, like the dynamics, but here what would happen is you would overstep because you are multiplying with the DT, which is large. Yeah. And suddenly be like too stretched and suddenly DFT is like, oh, I don't know how to calculate this energy and it'll give garbage. Yeah, like we're like two nuclei like right on top of each other, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the, the, then suddenly they have so much repulsive force that they fly off. And so it's like it's horrible. Like, so it's easy <laughs> better to have them like small. Right. Is, so. it, is, this, is this clear to Hikun and Carla about the time step issues we always we always have to worry about, right? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. We've, so we've talked about this with, you know, just kind of more standard molecular dynamics uh, type trajectories. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, in fact, uh, it came up at a prelim exam recently. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so, just thought that was probably why you're laughing. Yeah. All right. So, so hit enter for twenty. Yes. Enter for okay. twenty. So we're going with twenty atomic units, which is a quarter of a femtosecond. You said. Yes. So basically, what oh, one uh, forty point something or forty one point something atomic units is one femtosecond. Okay. So, and by, by the way, atomic units for, for the students, right? Like, so when you write the simulation software like this, like there's certain units that are much more convenient for creating the software. 
And then if you want to later compare it to an experiment, wait till everything's done and then just compare that last unit, whether it's time or distance, whatever it is. So we leave things in atomic units that like make the most sense internal to a simulation. Right. Um, Cause otherwise we'll just have all these obnoxious decimals and stuff right. that like, we don't have to deal with it. So we shouldn't, right. We'll deal with it when we need right. to. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. For the students, the atomic unit is defined. So in physics, uh, in choosing your physical reality, you at max, uh, as long as you're in the non-relativistic regime, you have three things that you can scale up and down without affecting physics independently. So depending on what is your thing that you're simulating, for our case, we choose the electron mass to be one, uh, the Planck's constant, H bar, to be one, well, it's not Planck's constant, it's the scaled Planck's constant, I guess, because the original Planck's constant was just H. So H bar is H over four pi. So H bar is equal to one. And the mass of the electron, uh, sorry, the charge of the electron also one. So this, these are the three things that we could independently have chosen differently, but here we choose the mass, the charge and H bar to be one. So that immediately fixes uh, the rest of it. For example, the atomic unit for time is called the Jiffy that I discovered. So <laughs> amazing. <laughs> so, <laughs> so nobody calls it Jiffy though. I, I wish it was more popular. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll have to start saying it because I, I like that. That's <laughs> why. <laughs> My Delta T is 20 Jiffies. <laughs> Uh, yes, and Amazing. then the rest of it, there is uh, literally nothing to enter. Q enter. Just keep going. Q enter till it's uh... yeah. done. The, yes, so the total number of things you can edit here, but you can edit elsewhere as well. So just keep going. Q enter. Okay. Keep going. You don't need any link. So oh, yes, did it. done it. So cool. basically, there are eleven Qs. So, is it, so I guess we ran. For the default number of total steps right i don't remember entering that right right so okay. we, we can we can edit it very simply so now if you look at the files uh now you have the new two files called md log and md master so okay. md master is kind of like the control for md so if you open it Here you have like the total number of steps, where the files are going to be read and where it is going to be written, those kind of information. So, cool. so this wow. is going to be fun. This is awesome. So, and, and so this was written when we called, it was MD something, right? Uh, we called a, a command to, to do the interactive. Um, I'm trying to remember what it was now. I'm gonna have to go back and watch the video yeah, yeah. myself. <laughs> So, so let us run, run a simulation. Can we reduce the number of steps to like 100 so that you know, it doesn't take forever? Yeah, sure. Where, where's the number of total steps? First oh, end steps. Right. This one? OK. Right. So 256. Right. Powers of two. We like those. Right. 100. Right, right. So is, this, is, is that all we want to change? Yeah. OK. So nothing else practically needs to change. Okay. And then. Uh, the command for running a dynamics is job x, j o b e x space dash md. Yeah. Cool. Now, uh, the problem is uh, uh, no, it just takes time for, for each electronic structure that. It takes different amount of time depending on how what the configuration is. It's really hard to predict beforehand which one will take how long. Cool. Now, JobX as a program was originally written to geometry optimize the code. But later people realized that the structure for that can be used to do also molecular dynamics. So, oh, neat. The, so that's why the, this is like, the, it still says optimization cycle. It's actually time step. So, uh, okay. So people just didn't care to change that. <laughs> so while I was editing, I should I could have very easily edited this and like instead of getting optimization cycle, I could have given time step, but I was lazy myself. So <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Right, it, it will work. 
work That's is fully funny. valid. So at every time step, it is running. It's uh, finding the amount, the total energy using the yep. program DSCF. Then it is running grad. That is the one to do uh, the gradient. And then it is running this code called frog. Frog is the one that moves the molecule. It's called frog because uh, there's an algorithm called a leap frog velocity worldly for doing Newton's equations, integration, numerical integration. So that is the implementation there. So we call it frog. Germans have odd sense of humor. So <laughs> I hope I'm not offending anybody here. <laughs> so, okay. Now let's look at it. It will it look pretty much the same almost, except if you now look at MD log, and this is something I think uh, uh, Professor yeah, Grazioli right. has a lot of experience looking at. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> but yeah, Hikun, you've looked at these too. Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Carla, I, I, I'm not. Have you played with these at all? Um, I haven't. Okay. So we have so so we we've spent a lot of time running a ton of code to like kind of read a bunch of these things into like right. data frames so we could do stuff with them and and yeah so we've got like you know the the five hundred some almost six hundred that 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 you ran a while ago and shared yeah, with yeah. me and uh, yeah we can load that into a data frame in like right. a minute or something it's quick so right, we're, right. yeah we're we're ready to start running some more so this is this is right. perfect timing but uh, yeah so sorry go ahead. Yeah, so this, this is what has, it has done the simulation. So if we want to look at it, we have to make it into a movie. So the commands for that, these, these are like little commands that helps your life. Uh, mm -hmm. First one is log to EGY. Log to, to e yeah, EGY, log to energy, basically. Oh, oh neat, okay, enter. Oh. <laughs> Oh God, this is, a, uh, <laughs> okay. It literally tries to do three N minus six and then divide the energy with this. Now for a one dimensional, like for a two atomic molecule, you'd need to do three N minus five. So, <laughs> so th this is something, I mean, I guess, uh, I guess you can ha you have the source code for, if you go to the turbomol uh, directory uh, turbo dir right uh -huh. and if you, you you will have something called scripts there you can open log to gy <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah I was it log to eg EG yeah this one right now find like you go a little down uh, is there a certain word you want me to search for i i for for i'm basically looking for the number six so if you number six, six yeah, yeah yeah i'll do hang on all right Six. Uh, no, that might be it. No, no, no not that. Uh, I, this I one, I mean. Which one? No, no, not. It's okay. It's not this. Right. These are all. Oh uh, right. Yeah. It's not it. okay. things. I think that's all the sixes. Yeah. Um, oh God. Where, where does it use the? Maybe yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, I, I think this one, like 1.5. That was for a second. So, could you repeat that? We lost you for like a split second there. Oh, yeah, this one, this 1. 1.5 times n minus six. That okay. Thing, make that five, n minus five. Okay. Let me switch this back later. <laughs> All right. And now we'll go back to where we were. Uh, yeah, now do log to EGY. Log P2. What was it? Well, oh, that's what we write. Log yeah. to PG. EGY, energy. energy. Oh, EGY. EGY, of course, right. Log to EGY. There we go. Hey, <laughs> all right, nice. <laughs> <laughs> so if you make it, uh, yeah. 
you can decrease the size of your screen maybe to the yeah maybe <laughs> So a font size or something. There we go. That's it, right? Yes. Okay. So, so the second column, well, the third column, I guess, is the total energy. And you want that to be as conserved as possible. So what do you have a GNU plot here? Um, terminal, I guess that's probably better. easier if I just download this file. Yeah, yeah. It's you want me to download it? Yeah, yeah, I'll do that. Uh, yeah, let me download the file. Uh, hang on. Where am I? Let me open up. Uh, where's this one? Uh, SCP. So you have to first, okay, you have to generate this type log to EGY to and give it a name. Otherwise, it won't. Oh, right. I just dumped that on the screen, didn't I? Yeah. All right. Let's rerun that then, right? Mm -hmm. So we'll go this into, um, I don't know. Uh, Log and file, I don't know. Log dot text. There. There we go. Good call. Hey. Yeah. All right, let's go find this thing. There it is. Okay. So what do you recommend? So how do you plot, like whichever, whichever plotting, I, I'm still very old fashioned in like GNU plot level. So. I haven't used that in years, but we can see if it's installed, it might be. Right, 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 type GNU plot. Uh, uh, JNU will make. No, plot, so you don't have GNU plot. No, I don't have it. Hmm. Let me see, okay. what would be? Uh, do you all have any uh, plot? How do you plot graphs usually? Um, I usually, I'm, so I usually, let me think here. You can do We do a lot of things. What's that? You can do matplotlib. Yeah, that, yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Let's do matplotlib. Let me, um, let's get Anaconda Navigator going in here. That uh, yeah, we definitely use plenty of matplotlib. So I'll just put a Jupyter notebook in the same directory, and then uh, yeah, we can import that to a data frame or something. Research. Hey. Okay. Yeah. So we got this. Now handling data in Python is your thing. I'll let you do. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, let's uh let's go import uh, pandas as pd import uh, matplotlib dot pyplot as plt. Right. All right. So we have that, and now. Let's see here. We could do, um, oh my God, what is it? Uh, with, uh, if we go with, is this what you would do? No, I would do like np.loadtxt then. Oh, I don't even, I, okay, that's new to me. Okay, load, load txt. I don't usually use this. Cool, I'm learning something new too. All right, load, ah, load txt, and then you just pass it the, the name. Yeah, but I think split equals to space can have, yeah, then then uh, the name of it, so just log in, comma, split equals to space. I ah. think this will work. No, it doesn't like the split thing. We could just not split it and then do it after. Right. Let's see. Let's see what this looks like. Oh, okay. it actually split it up. 
Yeah, it looks like it did. Oh, mm -hmm. check that out. Cool. Okay, so maybe we can, um, this is an array. What happens if we go like zero or zero? Ah, zero, all of them. Okay, that's the first row, all the numbers, right? Right, right. Okay, so uh, then if we instead go all the columns, we went the first column, this is the time, right? Okay. Yeah, this is the time step, so. Okay, here we go, times, is that, what's the next one you, uh, you said? So the, uh, this one would actually, I think, be actual time in, uh, no, the next one is kinetic energy, total energy, and potential energy. Zero, one, two. All right, so we'll do kinetic next? Yeah, kinetic is okay. the next one. So we'll call it KE equals raw. I don't know why this is lagging. Raw data one. Mm -hmm. And then the next one is zero one. You want total? Yeah. Or potential? Total. Tote n equals raw data, comma two and PE equals raw data, all of them three. Okay, cool. So now if we go uh, plt dot plot, oops, times and ke, let's see what this does. Hey, cool. All right, now we're getting some stuff. All right. So the more important thing to plot is like the uh, potential energy and the uh, uh, total energy at the same time. Because you, you want to see how well did you do in the conservation of energy. Thing. Ah, okay. Yes, this is going ah, to look right. like this. While it is like looks horrible, uh, it is like it is actually not too bad because the variation is quite small. Yeah. So, like, cool. if you plot the potential energy uh, along uh, in the same plot. Oh right. Okay. Uh, we'll do show. I guess. Yeah. Let me. Uh... Hey. So no, because the kind of guys is tiny. If you if you do the PE instead of uh, KE. Oh, do PE instead of KE. Oh, neat. Right. So yes, the total energy seems to like. Of course, this is numerical integration. You will always have, like, you know, some amount of error. But the good thing about a velocity world is that while it fluctuates the overall total doesn't change like on the if you take a moving average it will be not terrible so mm -hmm. cool so this is our hcl md now to look at the uh, movie uh, we can do a vmd thing right okay. yeah yeah, yeah we can do that so if you go back to the term, uh, cluster okay okay i have to sign back into the um what do you call it? The uh, the VPN. So uh, I might freeze, but like uh -huh. if I freeze, it usually it lasts about five seconds or so, and then I come back. So stick around if, if I freeze yeah, 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 for a yeah. second. <laughs> I don't know why it, it does this all the time, but. Mm -hmm. Hey. Oh, am I yeah. back? Yes. Okay, cool. Excellent. All right. Now. Aye, aye, aye. So, of course, my terminal that I had on the right. cluster is frozen because <laughs> yeah, so yeah. we had, I don't know if it's like this at, at, at uh, Rutgers too. We have yeah, to, yeah. Yeah. the same deal. Every, this is a uh, super I mean, common thing. Everywhere. Even at Yale, it was the same. So, okay. Okay. I'm back on the cluster. And um, okay, what um, 
What should we get command, next? Yeah, the command to get the movie is log to x. To x? No, x, like just x. Oh, <laughs> run that? Yeah. So it will create a file that is typically in the .xyz format. Oh, cool. OK, so mm -hmm. I'll, I'll um, trage.xyz maybe? Yeah. OK. So and by the way, just to, to remind the students, so when these commands dump stuff out onto the terminal, right? It's not getting saved anywhere. It's just showing it to me. So if I put this little uh, this, this little symbol here, and think of it like an arrow, like I'm shoving it into uh, Traj XYZ. Is that clear, uh, Hikun and Carla? Cool. So everything that would have gotten dumped out to the screen instead got dumped into this new file, where if I list everything, mm -hmm. see now I have this file here, and uh, and if I cat that file now we see it's all there so okay cool so now i have to copy that one let me get this one um here now and let's see this one was called something dot xyz Trage. thank you Trage XYZ. run that there it goes now i have no. somewhere here there somewhere. it is Right. Cool. So let's let's open it. Let's see if, how it does in Pymol real quick. Oh, it will do fine. Okay, cool. So we'll open up in Pymol. <laughs> All <laughs> right. Show as uh, I don't know licorice. There we go. Cool. So we've got a, a hydrogen and a and a chlorine. Cl chlorine. Ah, oh, that's sick. <laughs> That's awesome. Cool. So this is about what we expected to happen, right? Tahi and right. Carla? Oh, yeah, I thought you were asking. <laughs> <laughs> so can I share uh, my screen once? Yeah. Let me hear. I'll stop my share. So okay, ready. then uh, this is what the acetaldehyde looks like. So I ran a bunch of acetaldehyde calculations here. What I'll do is I'll send you this package so that you can copy and run it because I don't know why it cannot find the basis functions from your library, but it doesn't really matter. Okay. Because I, I, I have the basis, uh, the, the SVP basis here. So it'll be okay. able to read the numbers directly from here. Oh, perfect. So I'll send you this. So uh, this is what uh, uh, the ground state. So, and uh, looks like so once i do did I, yeah vmd so this is the you guys can see right yep okay cpk and then this is the molecule that we want to study and then i mean this is a tiny like MD thing that I've done. Yeah. And then uh, the one which we really wanted to study was the triplet state, right? Right. That was right. the, uh, it's still, yeah, log to X, no, XYZ, uh, VMD, XYZ. This is the one which will, have like crazier dynamics because now instead of putting the electrons paired up we have basically forced it to be triplet so they are unpaired i'll show you what that means in a second so this has around 300 steps so it has a longer dynamics so it does those crazy rotations those like they can see that this this uh, carbon and this oxygen thing rotating. That is nearly impossible in the singlet because in the singlet, it is a double bond. Kind of. Oh, right. So between the oxygen, basically this double bond is much weaker here. So it, it allows a bunch of those rotations. So, cool. so anyway, uh, what I wanted to show was uh, uh, there's this another program called TM to mold in, and it finally gives a uh, product which is run on a code called mold in. 
which is another good, but there is the one advantage that it is light. So it can okay. load a bunch of orbitals Ooh. really quickly. Wow. So it shows the homo and the lumo on this structure. So you can look at the electronic configuration at like various time steps. You can like take snapshots and you know, figure out what the electron density looks like. This is the total density. Of wow. Density. So, and the, the phase is the two colors? Yeah, the phases are the two colors. So you can plot out each alpha orbital, like the spin up orbitals and spin down orbitals separately. Wow. So this is a spin up ones. And, and this, so anytime you run, um, Anytime you run uh, uh, like an ab initio uh, dynamic mm. simulation, you have everything you need to do this later? No, like, no it, it oh, basically okay. uh, it overrides the coefficients at every time step. So unless you store, and then it, it becomes very heavy, like in the sense this uh, molden file for a molecule as small as uh, acetaldehyde is like a 385 KB file. You know? Now, if you imagine if you were scaling this up like thousand steps, hundred trajectories, it's going yeah. to create a huge amount of data that will probably not be very useful. So, okay. Log to EGY, uh, let's say energy. And then if you do genu plot, plot using one three with L, using one. Yes, I need to make it wider. Otherwise, you can't see. So yes. Cool. Oh. So yes, that the total energy there is fluctuation. We you cannot like avoid like fluctuating it at all. You just hope that it is not crazily going out. Like there is a reasonable drift. Like if you see, think about it, if there's a total drift of maybe. Uh, an uh, in, in, in energy unit here is called heart rate. So like maybe what might like less than one milli heart rate, I would say, which is like roughly 20 K cal per mole. So you can do better. Of course, if you reduce the time step, it will do better. Mm -hmm. so, so that's what I would suggest. So. Cool. So this is how you uh, generate and run uh, the turbo. Well, I understand that right now you are having trouble with the uh, basis set getting it. Like it's not getting the library currently. Mm -hmm. Did you uh, email, uh, like did you get to, like because since you got the license, you technically also bought tech support. Oh, cool. Yeah, so the charge is more for the services than the source itself. Ah. You can say like, okay, I, I cannot, why is my cluster not being able to find the libraries for this basis? Okay. Be because I, I can assure you, like, like, like if I, I'll make, like, I'll give you a fresh, like, this is what it looks like in my situation, like quick uh, demonstration. Yeah. Uh, so just the chord. What does the code look like? Yes, this is what it looks like, plain nothing else. Mm -hmm. So define, enter, enter a word. You know what? I remember, realize what I made mistake. I forgot to tell you the word all. Oh, <laughs> we'll, have to, we'll have to try it again with all in there. <laughs> right. And it's and the muscle memory, memory, right? When, when you're exactly. typing it. This has become no muscle memory for me. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I'm yeah. like, sometimes people will be like, oh, can you tell me what to do? I was like, I have to do it myself, right? I don't know. <laughs> okay, okay. Let's let's re redo it one, one more time very quickly on your system. Yeah, yeah. Let's try it. Good call. All right, cool. Uh, where is it? Here, am I back in? I am. Okay. So uh, make a new directory. Oh, and uh, 
Actually, let me let me just get a. Do you think I need a node? Or, uh, you think the login node? Oh, okay, so make a new one. Okay. Yeah. Make, uh, two. Okay. Then copy the make a quad file or uh, just get an uh, like quad file. Uh, should I just copy the one from the yeah. other one? Sure. Uh, yes. Okay. Hold on, and now um, define next. All right, fine. Okay, there we go. Um, I forgot. What Enter. Do do? Enter. Is this chord? No. Enter. Oh, no. Enter. Now a chord. Chord. Enter. Oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Now. It's just a star star no no bb all yes i totally forgot the word all i'm so sorry <laughs> okay that def uh, two def two dash right yeah. yes now it's hey right. all right <laughs> well that's good uh, star star EHD for extended local theory for okay. guess orbitals. And what if, yes. Right. I go to char zero is fine. Mm -hmm. And yes, we accept this occupation. Now type Thank RI. You. Oh, all right. RI. Just RI? Type RI. Enter. Type on. All right. Oh. Enter and then Q, 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 Q. Now open the control file once to change like the SCF I twelve limit to three hundred. Yes. That's it, right? Right. Now do our IDFT once. RI resolution of identity DFT. Yeah. So. So we're good now. That. Yes. All right. Sweet. We just have to remember to put all in there. Cool. Yes. <laughs> yeah. See, I, at the moment I typed, I remembered. Oh, <laughs> I forgot <laughs> to <delete> that. <laughs> cool. When I when I uh, when I work with the video later, I can edit it so that we cut out the part where, <laughs> where we forgot all, and we'll, uh, I'll put this in there instead or something. I'll I'll play with it. Right. That's uh, okay. Uh, or, yeah, maybe okay. I'll just put a little like text on the screen, like "Oh, right. we figured this out later." Right, right, right. If you, yeah, watch it later. Cool. Very cool. Well, thank you so much. Of course, no problem. Uh, so in, in the directory, Turbodor scripts we edited that from minus oh my god i should go change that back yes. yeah oh my god yeah let's do that now before i forget um <laughs> my god good call <laughs> i wonder where was it again it was in scripts yeah log to easy uh, y five Something lagging again. Wait, five. Oh, there's a five. Okay, I think I found it. Yeah, you did. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Make this a five and six, right? right? Six. Good call. <laughs> That would have driven me crazy later. <laughs> right, right. Uh, oh, it looks like there's something in the chat. Oh, yeah, Carla had to go. Okay. Okay. Cool. See you, Carla. Yeah, I think she left. Cool. Well, uh, thank you so much. Was there anything else that? Uh... Well, this is like for the time being, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was this was huge. Well, thank you so much. I really oh, appreciate sure. it. Yeah. All right, see you guys. All right, take care. All right, we'll see you later. You.